Uh, today's topic is regret. Uh, 64% of millennials have regrets about buying their current home. Here's why. Are you surprised by that number, Catherine? Yes. This article is May 17th, 2021. What, what surprises you about this article, about that regret? Um, I just think most people who have bought their home in the last couple of years have a lot of equity, even if it was like two months ago. Here's the thing. This regret for millennials is not new. Okay. I remember uh, this. So this article is February 28th, 2019. So before pandemic, before the rush, before royal uh, real estate was like toilet paper. Yeah. 63% of millennial homeowners regret buying a home. So it's only gone up 1% actually over the last two or so years. Okay. So very, very so consistent. About two thirds of millennials regret. They just regret. Is it buying a home or buying the home? Okay, so let's look at this uh, from two years ago. They say regret buying a home. Um, really quick, this is from two years ago. They had two complaints. We can find it. There are two reasons for complaining about buying a home or regretting buying a home was... Um, unexpected costs... And they also was a bad location, high mortgage payments, and buying the wrong size home. Now, the only thing is, the number one thing is unexpected costs. Okay. Most common regret, underestimating costs of home ownership. Okay. I wonder if these costs, though, have to do with home ownership or just moving in general. So it says here... Among all homeowners, including millennials, most common regret is underestimating how much the maintenance expenses and other hidden costs associated with buying and owning a home are. About 16% of homeowners and 21% of millennials cited this as a regret. Other types of regrets focus on the size. We're kind of just repeating that. So I think it's just the upkeep of, oh, I have to do the maintenance now instead of... I have to change the filter. I have, I have to change the filter. Oh, the hot water heater hot water heater. I, I hate saying hot water heater. Water heater. Water heater mm -hmm. uh, needs to be replaced. It doesn't magically just heat water. Yeah. I don't I don't buy that one though as being a surprise. They should know that. No, these are so Okay. I think you un, I they're underestimating costs. I think you underestimate how much people know about homes. Okay. In the maintenance and the repairs and the updates. Okay. Well I, we're learning. Yeah. So do you have any regrets about owning a home? No, right. because even if it is a little bit more expensive, which I would say it's not more expensive than I would have thought, um, you make up for that and then some with the equity. Yeah, I guess that's my my annoyance. And I would say frustration, but I would also go to, I would go as far as it is an annoyance of that you regret having to spend a dime to make a dollar. Yeah. I think there's a saying about that. Step over dollars, pick up dimes. Yeah, what I don't. Yeah. It's, it's, and then, and then we, we are, we will talk to um, people in their late thirties, early forties, and they regret not buying a home earlier. It's like, no matter what, there's just all this regret going on. And maybe you just need to be learn some gratitude. Yeah. Well, it's like the people who rent and they are just so glad and so grateful that they don't have to replace a dishwasher unexpectedly. I've heard at least a couple people say that. And I always think, well, that, that's silly because that's like a maybe an $800 thing, which is a bummer if it's unexpected. But I mean, you if you just look at the appreciation, principal pay down and tax benefits, you get that and like I would say an average two months. Yeah. And I think you need to be looking forward to retirement age. And are you going to start regretting that you don't have 
a nest egg. You don't have some money saved up. And most people's major retirement is going to be the equity in their home. So I wouldn't be regretting the thing that's going to allow you the freedom to retire at some point. Yeah, me either. And I would just think about that dishwasher. Next time you have to replace a dishwasher or any appliance or anything like that in your house, just think about how nice it's going to be when that happens, when your house is paid off. And you'll go, oh, at least I don't have a payment. If you pay rent, you're going to pay rent the rest of your life. So here's the thing with this. Um, Grab your article that you're writing right there. Okay. Um, Because this is, like you said, this is... um, Home values have been going up. So if you bought a year ago, you have equity. If you bought two years ago, you got a lot of equity. If you bought three years ago, you have even more equity. And still two-thirds of millennials regret having all this equity. I wonder how they would feel if over the first two, three, four years, their property decreased. So what's your? what do you have to say about that? Okay, so I bought a condo in 2009. And it was, I paid 139 and the value started going down right away. By 2012, it was worth 105. And that's right about when people were asking me if I regretted buying that condo. I mean, that's a $35,000 drop. So you yes. had to have regretted that. Millennials right now are regretting their homes. Like their home, the average home is probably appreciating more than $35,000 a year right now. Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, But no, I didn't regret it because I knew the value would come back. So it started coming back in 2013. And by now, today, 2021, it's worth $300,000. So, yeah, no, I don't regret that. So you don't regret it right now? Right. Did you, you? And you didn't regret it at any point, even though the value was dropping? Right. All right. So do you... What's your big takeaway from the regret or do you want to share, do you have a thought or um, an insight to share of why people should stop regretting owning their home? Um, Yeah, I would say be aware of the costs going in. That way you won't be caught off guard. So realize that you're not just going to buy this house and have a mortgage payment, and that's it. You'll have to maintain it. You have to maintain the yard. Let, let me just add to it. I think some of the problem is is everyone thinks because they can look at homes online, like that's the process. Oh, I just look at homes and I buy a home. There's way more involved in that, and now you're understanding because now you regret. Instead of talking to a real estate professional like us, you're trying to do everything online yourself and you're not seeing the big picture. You're seeing such a small sliver of what, what it is. Yeah. So don't just look at principal and interest payments also include insurance and taxes also include upkeep, um, heating utilities. Um, and then maybe leave a little bit of room. So if you're pre-approved for 600,000, maybe you don't actually want to pay 600,000. Any other ahas or takeaways? Um, home values go up and they go down and um, hang in there. It'll always come back up. My my biggest uh, takeaway from this is, so something else pointed out in the articles is millennials, percentage of millennials that own homes are like eight to nine points less on average than generations before. And they regret it more. And I just, I think, um, you know, we, we talk to people that are cashing out, downsizing at some point in their lives too, and they have some regrets about money and finances as they go into their retirement years and there's not going to be an income coming in anymore. And I'm just not sure if you should ever regret something where the money, like you're setting yourself up for uh the future for success in the future not sure there should be regret there unless it just is a complete burden on you then you need to figure out other options i guess right and maybe you didn't buy a very practical house practical house something to think about so regrets i don't think you should ever regret buying the home if in fact there should probably be more regrets if you didn't buy well said 
Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Money and Marriage Podcast with Catherine and Darren. And when you're ready, here's four things that you can do right now. Number one, make sure you're subscribed to this show, whether you're watching or listening. If you're watching, you can also click the like button, click the thumbs up button. Number two, if you're a first time homebuyer, get a free guide, seven costly mistakes homebuyers make. Visit costlymistakeshomebuyersmake.com. Number three, if you're selling your home, get access to our Get Sell Ready Guide and Checklist. It'll show you how to get your home ready without spending a fortune or wasting your nights and weekends updating and remodeling your home. Visit GetSellReady.com. And number four, start a smart moves conversation with us. Get clarity about what to do next. Get your questions answered, your concerns taken care of, and an action plan customized to your timeline. You can schedule a call with us at SmartMovesCall.com or start a chat with us. Visit M.me slash group. 